a parasite work. <laughs> He's been having a blast fighting off the parasites. That's all I got. So basically on the flip it up inverse just south of Hawaii across the band. So we're, we're a temperate prime climate. Um, we don't quite get as cold as here. The block that I've been working on is, has been with the BHU, which is an organic trust, which has been going for about 35 years. Uh, it's just relaunched itself as an organic trust um, for um, commercial purposes and their aim to promote organics through research, education and extension. Um, when we got together with them, they, we got a group of farmers around, they asked them, they'd done no animal research on the, this, this block for nearly 40 years. We asked the organic farmers what their major problems were with dealing with animals, and the parasites came up as a, one of the major problems. So we decided to take some novel um, approach to this to this problem, incorporating what we've been doing. Now, just to show you, in New Zealand at present, this is what the weather's like, about 40 degrees. That's me last Sunday. Oh, jeez. Oh, that's, that's me there. The right, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, it's basically it's summer, uh, high in the production season, and uh, things are going, we've had the best grass growing season in the Now, I'm going to talk about tar TSTs, which we call targeted selective treatments, and this is quite crucial to talk, so I'll spend a bit of time on them. They've basically been developed in conventional farming systems to provide a source of parasite refuge. Um, they've been developed to lessen the risk for developing antibiotic resistance. They involve part treatments of flocks, but trouble is having to which animal to treat. And there's been several options. Historically, we've, we've treated animals on fecal lead count. And then just recently, the models have said we have to do treat 10 or 20% of a flock to maintain some sort of refugia. Now, what we've done is we've done that randomly, and we've also treated the lightest animals in the flock. But my colleague, Andy Greer, has developed a uh, TST which is based on animal performance and it's been, it's got the name Happy Factor and it's stuck. <laughs> and I'll show you why it's stuck in a while. Basically, it's based, it takes into account the, the non-parasite factors, which is um, feed in or pasture growth, feed intake. It takes an age or animal maturity and the climate, the ambient temperature, and also the sex of the animal. Put that into a, an algorithm and you get an efficiency of utilization against energy. And see for the animals that are uh, perform as expected them to be happy, and therefore won't benefit from any, any sort of treatment, and those that underperform are suffering from parasitism. Now, 
This is why it's been called the happy factor. That we, we think we have the ability to basically draft off happy animals to the right, draft off the unhappy animals to the left, put them onto a curative pasture. Now we do this, by, we can do this by using electronic tagging and automatic grafting. So we can weigh 100 animals in about 10 months and separate them out. So it works quite well. So that's just a little, that's basically why it's been called a happy factor. Now, how effective is a happy factor? If you look using a low weight gain in, um, index, you can see that we've got large differences between the animals that we've deemed to be requiring treatment versus the animals requiring no treatment. But if we take the same animals and we classify them on live weight, you can see there's basically there's no, there's no difference. And if we look at fecal egg count, again, there is, even though there is one blip in the system there, that's basically very, very hard to do. So the TST on animal performance, the head effect, has been able to identify those, those slow growing animals that were not necessarily, was not necessarily due to them being lighter or having a greater fecal egg count. Okay. So, we've chosen chippery plantain because of their anti-parasitic properties. Um, in the lab, we've found that um, these, these plants affect parasite egg development and larval development, and also the ability of larvae to establish in the grazing host. Now, Taken most of those studies into the field, we've then um, grazed ewes on pure swords of plantain or ryegrass, and the ewes on the plantain grew, um, had lower fecal accounts, grew, had higher, higher body weights at weaning, and their lambs had significantly higher lamb growth rates, around about uh, 350 grams a day at, at weaning. My colleague um, and I again, we look, also looked at um, using chicory as a short-term curative treatment um, for animals that were infected with parasites and we had a bit of trouble adapting them to the, the chicory um, as a pure sports but we did find that the chicory provided some sort of resilience to future infection so there is some, there is some um, prospects of progress there. Now the experimental area as I said hasn't had any animals on it for 20 to 30 years so we basically had to rip up the ground um, we were, we had been given two, two hectare blocks, which is basically 40% of the organic unit. Um, we were ripped up and left in fallow and um, tilled over the summer. Each paddock, um, 1.5 hectares was put down in AR1 white grass with white flavour. And then a further 1.5 hectares was planted in a mix of ch chicory plantain and white flavour as well. So we wanted, because we have got parasites, we want to give them some contamination. So we, in, in August, which is our um, start of spring, um, we took 40 peripatrian ewes, we split them into two, 20 on each paddock. We dosed them on one paddock with um, 50,000 T glue reformist larvae. Or on the other paddock, we gave the ewes um, talidosarge, which is circumcinta, which is the new name Frostatardia, and that was done within 7 to 15 days after lambing. Those ewes, the ewes and their lambs were then allowed to graze for 12 weeks on those pastures, and at the end of the 12 weeks, the pasture larvae had uh, risen to a thousand larvae per kilogram of fresh herbage. So we had some infection there. Now, the actual experimental trial that we did was we allocated 60 lambs at Frogmore, they were weaned. Um, 30 went on to the block that was had T. glue performance infection, and 30 went on to the um, Talidosagia infected area. The lamp within those ryegrass areas were um, rotationally grazed. Um, they were split into four and they were weak on a weekly basis. We did um, measured animal live weights, individual um, fecal egg counts, and DAG scores at four line intervals, and we measured pasture production weekly, so we took Past production when they went on to the paddock and when they came off. And these, these were used to help set the targets. Um, and those animals that underperformed were drafted off and allowed to go on to the, the bioactive sward area, 0.5 a hectare. 
And as a safeguard, any animal which failed to respond after two weeks to the curative treatment was then treated and removed from the organic unit as, as per our organic regulations. Some interim results, and you can see we're only five weeks into the trial, and it's running, it's running for basically uh, 14 weeks. We've been very successful in providing um, infection. We've got we're going from zero to 1,300 eggs per gram on the tripe block, and from zero to 3,500 on the Yostatagi block. Growth rates went post weaning, um, went flash as you'd expect, but then went. They've actually uh, started to peak, and then as the infection started to bite on both things, they've dropped away. Now, if we look, when we apply the happy factor, you can see that after three weeks, 21 days, on the tripe block, we had two animals that were deemed to be requiring treatment on the Ostatagia block, seven, and they were, they were, they were put off the curative treatment. Um, two weeks later, as the infection started to bite, we had um, 13 trikes. 13 animals on the tripe block and 23 on the Ostatagia block. Now when we looked at the DAG scores, we were see they're quite soiled, and when we did them, we looked at the mean DAG score for the, the animals on the tripe block, there's a thing, and we found that there wasn't much difference. But when we split those animals up into treated and untreated, you start to see some significant differences appearing. Now this trial's still going, and as I speak, they've, they've done a sample yesterday, so I don't know what the results are. But with the level of challenge that we've got, um, we're, ex we're going to really test the system to see if it actually works. So in summary, so far, and from our previous work that we've done on um, conventional dairy farms in New Zealand and Scotland and, as, and also sheep farms, we found that there's been no association between individual fetal account and individual animal performance. Um, we need to take account of restrictions in feed, and so that, that you have to include pasture production in your model. Um, and we are very confident that the, the TST, based on lightweight gain, is a suitable indicator for again playing animal separate comparisons. And it's just been recently accepted by the, um, the Organic um, Controlling Board in Britain, and MAF in New Zealand, and also Equishua, who uh, police the um, the organic certification as a this TST system has been just recently been adopted as a means, a quantifiable means of, of uh, treating animals. Now, and we need to put in the fact that these, these bioactive forages may not provide the production responses needed considering the parasite challenge that we now face because the parasite challenge we face is about four times what we expect of it. So we, as I said, we are really going to test the system. And it's a, probably a bit early to tell, but um, the animals that we have used curative treatment on in the first round will return back into the grazing system after a two-week period. And I'd just like to thank my um, funders, Sustainable Farming Fund, BHU, Sea Companies, Crop Market, and uh, PGG Wrightsons and United Fisheries who provided me with an organic fish fertiliser for spraying on my pastures. Thank you very much.
What if we could maybe get print up yep. the, your notes and yep. distribute them? That would be great. Yeah. But if you just talk about the back one, you yeah. yeah. And what sort of deviation were you usually kicking them out at? We, we're kicking them at, out at 20% under the the appeal. Now I have another slide where you actually you can change that formula and we found that when we did work in Scotland that the formula <coughs> indicates 0.76 whereas in New Zealand we're using 0.84 because we have um, different genetics in sheep and also probably slightly better um, pastures. So it would have to be tempered, you'd have to calibrate it for your Area. Yeah. And what variety of chicory were you using? You can ask that. I think it's rocket. And the plain time is tonic. Oh. Okay.